Hey there, want to talk in further detail about the differences between where and having. It's a common question for students to have, and it's a common point for them to struggle. So uh, I'll say at the outset, outset what I always say, which is the difference between where and having is very crisp. Where, which you don't need to know anything about aggregation to understand, filters prior to the aggregation, whereas having filters afterwards. Where filters the results that are included in the aggregation, and having filters the group by results that are output after the aggregation. But oftentimes students say, that's swell, that's very crisp, I still don't know what you're talking about exact exactly very reasonable. Uh, I think the best way to deal with that fact is through a, um, a well-crafted example. So let's jump right into it. Uh, let's take a look at a table that I think will help us drill down into the difference between where and having. Okay, so here we go. We've got a simple sales table and records here include individual salespeople, their IDs, their names, the amount that they have sold, the product that they have sold, and the region with which they are affiliated, okay? So the question then becomes, uh, what might we do with a table like this that would pertain to where and having? Okay, let's say for the sake of this example that we are interested initially in the sales of the widget product. Let's start with the simplest thing we could ask in SQL about sales of widget, given this salesperson info, amount they've sold, the product, whether it's widget or gizmo, and the region with which the salesperson is associated. So one of the easiest things we can do is select all from sales, sorry, from sales, where product, uh, I'm going to try to keep my capitalization consistent where product is equal to widget. Simple enough, nothing to do with aggregation. And lo and behold, we see there are two sales. They happen to be from Smith and, and Levy uh, in the following amounts related to widgets. And you say, okay, you know, we've seen two, we've seen all the individual records related to the sales of widgets. But we might be interested in a broader aggregation to describe the sales of that product. So let's take a look at that. So what we can do instead of selecting individual records is to describe those records using an aggregation. And we can take the sum of the amount from sales. Sorry, still trying to get from sales where product is equal to widget. So now, instead of getting the individual records of interest, we will characterize the total sales across those records. And sure enough, we see, just as we see up here, that 1260 plus 7760 does in fact equal 9020. So we've made some progress in terms of understanding the widget sales. Okay. So we have some aggregation now. We don't yet have a group by. We are not grouping the aggregation according to values in one or more attributes. We're just describing the entire table. But we are limiting which records get included in that aggregation. So far, so good, I hope. Let's take it to the next level. Okay, so the next, for the next step, we're going to step away from our focus on widgets and work to characterize total sales in terms of individual regions. We have four regions, north, south, east, and west, as you can see. So what we want is a sum of the sales, which you know we already did here, filtered just for widgets, but we want the sales for both products, and we wanna report the sales according to each region. So let's do that. Select uh, region, comma, sum of amount from 
from sales. Nothing new here. But we are going to group by the region. Okay. And this will just give us the sum, but it will give it per region. We'll see an entry for north, south, east, and west. And sure enough, here we go. Okay. So now we are aggregating according to attribute values. That's new. Next step. Okay, next step. Let's say that in doing our analysis of sales per region, we are only interested in underperforming regions. And let's say that we have arbitrarily defined an underperforming region to be that set of regions whose sales is less than $10,000 in total. So let's think about that criteria. Sales less than $10,000 in total. Is that something that we can understand by filtering or achieve by filtering individual records? No, because that is a criterion that is only evaluatable once we have summed everything up. Because of that, we need to use a having statement to achieve that criteria. And we can look from this result to see which of our regions are underperforming by that criteria. East has some 8,000 8, 8, some odd, that's underperforming, it's under 10,000. North, 3,000, that's underperforming. South is doing well, we don't have to worry about that. West is underperforming. So we, you know, we could achieve this manually, but let's talk about how to do it programmatically. We need to use the same exact query that we had before, but we need to add a having condition. And our having condition is that the sum that we are doing per group of the amount needs to be less than 10,000, okay? So basically we're just saying, we've got this result, this list of results that have been aggregated according to a category, and we wanna filter those categories. Now let's take a look at that. And sure enough, we have excluded from our results the South region, because the South region is not underperforming according to that criterion. Could we, have re could we have recreated this result without having? No, we could not. There's no amount of where using that is going to enable you to do that. Okay, we've had where, when we we're only looking, interested in looking at widgets. We've had having, when we're interested in both products, but only from underperforming regions as determined by their total sum sales. Let's bring both concepts together at the same time. Let's say we're only interested in widget sales, but we want to see which regions are underperforming based on widget sales and widget sales alone. And let's say our criteria for underperformance is $5,000 or less in widget sales. So we're basically bringing both of the previous two concepts together simultaneously. So we will select region, once again, because we'll need to know which regions are underperforming and which aren't, the sum of amount, okay, but do we, from sales, nothing new there. Do we need a where condition? Yes, because we're only interested in widgets. Where product is equal to widget. Okay, we're still going to group by region because that will allow us to see region by re region performance. And we are going to add a having condition that limits our post aggregation output to those records that meet our criteria of underperformance in terms of sales that are bad enough to warrant our analysis. And we said that that condition is going to be that the sum total of sales per region for the widgets is going to be less than $5,000. Okay, and we fire that off. And the only region that appears to be underperforming by that crit criteria is the northern region. And if we go back up to our, let's see here. Okay, so we know we did not do the, um, the preliminary work to confirm that. But if we go up here to the, category, to the original data, we can see 
Um, North has two sales, one's for widgets, it's 1260, and we saw that in a result, that checks out. South has one sale of widgets, it's over 5,000, so we wouldn't expect to see that. Interestingly, interestingly, East and West have no widget sales at all, so they don't enter into our output at all which is you know an, an, an interesting sort of PS uh, given that there are no entries for zero amounts for widgets we don't get to see in this analysis that East and West haven't sold any widgets whatsoever that's a question of the quality of the data going into the table in the first place we are going to assume in this example that that's intentional and that the fact that East and West region salespeople recorded no sales of the widget whatsoever is intentional and accurate and we're not concerned that we don't get that result but it's interesting to note. So there you have it. I hope a sufficiently detailed and common sense example that might allow you further appreciation of the distinction between filtering before the aggregation using where and filtering after the aggregation using having. You know, the same basic definition as before, but I hope the example allows for some further clarity on that issue. Um, if not, let me know. Uh, otherwise, study hard, and I will see you online.